We've all seen Olympic track stars who fall, faces torn by anger and grief. Suffering, it's tough on national TV. It's tough anytime. Each of us either has experienced or will experience some kind of suffering along life's track. It goes with the human condition. The story of Job teaches lessons about suffering that all of us need to hear for that time when it's our turn. From the Moody Church in Chicago, this is Running to Win with Dr. Erwin Lutzer, whose clear teaching helps us make it across the finish line. Today, Dr. Lutzer continues his series, God, Why Me?, with a message on the size of a suffering soul. The Bible says that the Lord loves his people, and those whom he loves he chastens, scourges every son whom he receives, and that becomes the refiner's fire. Tragedy is all over the place, not only happens in the lives of the unconverted, but in the lives of Christians as well. And oftentimes there are people who go through those experiences in which it seems as if God has deliberately hidden his face. There are times when it seems as though the manifest presence of God, that sense of well-being, that sense of peace that often accompanies us, is gone. It may happen because of a series of tragedies. It may happen in your life because of your background, the rejection and the abuse that you received. It may happen because of illnesses in your home. There are times when it seems as if our emotional light goes out and we are caught in turbulence and despair and depression. I feel sorry for people who live almost their entire lives feeling depressed, but there are people just like that. And sometimes the cause is because of unresolved guilt and anger, but oftentimes that may not be the cause. It may simply be the circumstances of life that have fallen in on the human soul. Well, as you know, this is the fourth in a series of messages on the book of Job. And last week we dealt with Job's friends, you remember, and I gave you three mistakes that they made and why it was that God was not pleased with them at the end of the book. Well, because the book of Job is so long and because we have only eight messages that we're going to spend, it's not possible for us to go speech by speech. You know that you're supposed to be doing that in your own reading. What I'd like to do today is to look at the size, that is S-I-G-H-S, the size of the suffering soul. And this morning's message, because of the nature of it, is going to necessitate that we read some of the book of Job. And in reading it, we are trying to come to grips with how deeply Job felt that God had abandoned him. And in the first part of the message, what I want you to do is to try to absorb into your own life the depth of Job's pain, which was very deep, and his sense of abandonment. Four sighs of the soul. First of all, I want you to take your Bibles and turn to Job chapter 10, and we pick it up in verse 18. Job chapter 10, verse 18 where he says at the end of one of the speeches that we commented on last time, Why then hast thou brought me out of the womb? Would that I had died and no eye had seen me. I should have been as though I had not been, carried from womb to tomb. Would he not let my days alone? And he's speaking to God here, I take it. Withdraw from me that I may have a little cheer. God, if you just took your hand off my life, if things weren't so bad, let me die before I go and I shall not return to the land of darkness and of deep shadow, the land of utter gloom as darkness itself, of deep shadow without order and which shines as the darkness. God... In light of the fact that I did not die at birth, which would have been my preference in retrospect, let me die now. First of all, I wish that I had not been born, but having been born, it would be best for me now to simply sink into death. 
By the way, the Bible does say regarding Judas, Christ said, it would have been good for that man if he had not been born. There are some people, many people, it would have been good for them if they had never been born. All people who do not know Christ as Savior and who die without his protection and his righteousness, it can be said of them it would have been good for them if they had not been born. may not have been good for God because he has a purpose for them, but it would have been good for them if they had not been born. But all those who know Christ as their Savior, or in the Old Testament, who were in contact with God through the means prescribed, which certainly is true of Job, uh, those people can never say it would have been better if I had not been born. 30,000 Americans every year commit suicide, believing it had been better if they had not been born. Christians need not sink into that kind of despair because they know that God has a purpose and they know that what is happening to them does not happen randomly, but God is in it. Just think of what we would have missed if Job had died here. Think of what he would have missed if he had died here. There was a purpose, and even though that purpose is still obscure, and will be somewhat more revealed at the end of the book. Blessed is the person who does not say, I want to simply sink into death. I have a friend who, when his wife had been involved with another man and eventually left him, he said, when I would go to sleep at night, I always hoped I would not awake in the morning. Death sometimes seems like a welcome friend when you're going through that trial, but even he now has a new life, a new ministry, and God has blessed him abundantly. It's a good thing he didn't die after he went to sleep during those dark and difficult days. But first of all, there is then the sigh of depression. When the weight is so heavy upon you, you see no light, and the only light at the end of the tunnel seems to be the lights of an oncoming train. There is no way out. Secondly, there is the sigh of despair. Turn to chapter 23 for the sigh of despair. This is one of the greatest soliloquies in all of literature. 